Hey everybody, I'd like to discuss with you uh, something that I've been working on for a while now and it has a very deep emotional soul um, effect and I call it the Narcon, the artificial knockoff gemstone. And I would like to share with you a, a few um, things that I've researched and that this is part of a, an ongoing investigation and what I've experienced and my observations. And I would like to just um, help you to get an understanding or an awareness of this particular uh, fractured or splintered ego or an entitled facade of a person. Um, it's important just to take note that this uh, is, as I said, an ongoing investigation or researching um, in this particular behavior. It's just something that's come up in the development of the social structures of the of the societies that we are living in and how media has also contributed in this way as well to promote the selfishness of an ego-driven um, protocol or um, behavior in a person. Um, the, there are two types of narcons and I call it narcon for the narcissistic archontic behavior. So narcon is a new word or a spin on um, this particular um, frequency that, that we could come across if we haven't already. Uh, one is artificially created or implemented, implemented in behavior, social behavior, and the other is in human internal personal behavior. Uh, what are narcons? A narcon is a narcissistic archon or element that utilizes vanity or ego in a splintered, fractured manner. Um, narcons are formed when the internal light or the internal understanding or awareness of the consciousness, which is connected to the soul, um, not spirit, but the soul in this case, um, as the encased um, capsule for the, the spirit is bent or fractured or manipulated or has gone through a series of abuse in one way or another. And in this, it's almost as if you would be looking at a, a splintered glass or fractured glass or a broken mirror. Um, except it's it's completely uh, un it's not formed in the way that it should be. It hasn't healed. Um, think of a shard or of self that was splintered or has literally never been able to retrieve its own authenticity. So it's a person without the actual authentic self in awareness. So this is um, part of the armed heart, quantum heart. Um, uh, chapter or process. Um, something interesting that I've noticed is we can also look, uh, well, we need to look at what is surrounding us at this moment and um, the obvious social engine, sociological, behavioral engineered through media, personal behavior, politics, all kinds of factors that you can take in, in, in awareness and that there is a particular frequency engineered or implemented to hijack your human social consciousness or connection with people around you and with yourself, along with the fractured, um, perhaps trained in that particular frequency of, of the, the soul. Again, just be mindful that um, when I mention the soul, I'm saying that that is the capsule or that is a that is a section that is inside the physical body that 
the soul the, the soul is in for the spirit to anchor into. So just for you to be aware of that. Um, something else that's also come to my mind is that uh, we need to look at the artificially induced um, aspect as well. And I'll just briefly touch on this here. Um, this is not going to be the main focus of my particular article that I'm sharing with you. Um, we need to pay attention to the adaptive forces through the modification of artificial non-biological influence of something that's just come up now called uh, the selfish ledger. And I'm not going to name the name because I don't want this video to get knocked off, but I will put the article at the bottom in the link for you to look at or the modification of the selfish gene. Um, this is what it's all for. It's to create a self, it's to actually learn from the selfish gene, which is using a, an artificial um, approach. And it uh, gathers data movement or studies your, the data, which is basically information that it's learning from your behavior, machine learning through your mobile technology and whatever else they use uh, movements um, of your relationships or relationships with yourself based as an aspect of the human hive mind in the behavioral society that we are in and to also popularize the selfish gene by utilizing artificial social engineered ledger or container to emit this particular data or to carry this data. Just be, a, be mindful that this is my interpretation from my observation that I am sharing with you. Um, and all the other aspects with regards to the narcissism is also gathered from information that I've researched and that I'm putting together for you to understand it a bit more clearer. Um, something else that's also very interesting is this uh, I can basically sum it up as um, when you are in the company of a person like that and you just do not feel the heart energy connecting with you, you don't feel it at all. It's like um, you can see it, you can see the loving expression, the even kind of the cats or the whatever you want to call it, but the outer facade is is so thick it's so pasted with such thick masked energy that you can't actually establish who this person is now i'm now addressing also the narcon behavior in a personal level okay so a few things for us to look at is their characters in the way that they appear it's important to realize that a narcon is not only in the etheric form but also predominantly visible in human behavior or in a person who has already got narcissistic personality traits or has had an injury to the mind or the soul as i said before the fracture of the soul and more simply there are or there is a flaw or a crack in the mirror and the flawed viewing of how they see themselves, a distortion, okay. Uh, their traits are narcissistic, obviously. Um, there are also two types of narcissistic traits, that the, uh, which are the covert narcissist or the, and the overt narcissist. But please be mindful that this is not a psychological analysis at all. If you want to find out more about narcissism, just find it in the links below that I have that I will um, put there for you. Um, my focus is on the narcon itself, and this is a an observation. Okay. Um, what happens if you go to a person who is either a psychic or a healer, and this is actually uh, something to think about when you go to a healer um, where or you, you're connecting with this person who is energetically connected with a false frequency or projection of 
the mirrored light that you are seeking. So being there for you because you're looking for that specific assistance. Okay, um, I've seen it in uh, seeing healers who are fractured, uh, gurus, light workers, preachers, teachers, therapists, priests, you name it. Um, some of these pe these specific people are are almost sociologically engineered to really be available for you for that specific purpose. Um, and there are a few traits that one can look at um, to really understand what we're dealing with. And as I said, first, <clears throat> if there's no heart emotional energy connection with yours, then um, you need to be using discernment in this case, because this is not also directing or throwing fingers to anyone at all. This is just something for you to just be mindful of on your journey as you're going forward. Um, they pretend to care. Um, they pretend to be kind. Um, they reveal a projection or mirror, but it, it never reaches the heart. Uh, another aspect is inside they are deeply narcissistic and display fractured light or a complacency towards the person that they pretend to help or are being helped by. Um, this does not necessarily mean that it is a healer, but it can also be a person who is seeking healing. So this is a two-way street for you to be aware of. And it could even be a person that you're married to or involved with. Um, it's just something for you to look into. Uh, their intention is to seek energy. Always remember that energy that they seek energy. It's like a vampire. They still seek your energy, it does, but they're just doing it with a bit of light for you to look into. That's the difference. That is what a Narcon is. Bottom line, something that seeks a vampire that seeks your energy, but using light to blind you, to draw you in. That's what a Narcon is. Okay, something else to look at as well is Narcons fool you because they know what you want. I've just mentioned it. They use that light as a frequency. Uh, something very interesting to look at uh, in terms of patterned frequency. Um, please have a look at the Alien Love Bite by Eve Lorgan and Lauda Leon. Um, link provided at the bottom. Um, be also aware that this particular aspect, as it as it can or may be referenced as also twin flame toxic relationships. So something to think about. Narcons are able to pretend to be that person that they project out to you and that you believe that exterior projection is what you're seeking. So they become your beacon of light because you're seeking a beacon of light. Um, think for example, if someone points out a light straight at you and you're completely mesmerized by it, I think it was mentioned in a movie called The Guardians or something, I'm not sure, uh, don't quote me, um, where they get moon blinked using that light to blind you so that you are, um, because you're seeking that light. Again, the externalization of light when in actual fact the light is within you. Um, Please be aware that this does not mean that I am negating or saying that you must not go and see a therapist or a healer or a minister or anything like that at all. This is a personality condition for you to look at. It can be very much put in the same bracket as the narcissism to look at, look into. Uh, it also depends on how successful they are in that projection or act that they promote or they show to you. Um, it's an act. Uh, remember, it is a frequency and energy that they seek, and it always for their and it is always for their own self gain at the cost of you. There is the most important thing. Whatever is being drawn from you or seek from you or, or uh, 
drained from you it's at the cost of you some of you'll feel that you're that your your energy is depleting or you're losing energy or life force for that matter um this is also a classic statement of don't go into the light which is quite interesting because that particular light is a colder frequency in nature draws you in makes you want to see what you want to see and then spins you and throws you back into the world again um they don't really care about helping people or making a difference this is the projection of the light that they have worked on to act in that particular way uh, the only way to see this person is to look and feel with your heart at them and their actions towards you because the heart can never be hidden unless this person has no heart um, then I'd say run. They may try to shield their hearts under various layers of personalities or masks, depending on what it is that you're looking for. If you actually uh, connect with them and you actually put them on the spot, they can throw out or whip out one particular mask or the other for you to look at so that you are then you seek uh, you're saying, well, you know, why are you doing this? And this person is like, me? I didn't do that. Uh, trickery, whatever. Or a bit of a codependency. Oh, it's because I'm wounded in such a way, in such a way, or something like that. So that's for you to also look into as well, especially if you're in a relationship where you are uh, feeling like you're doing a hell of a lot more than the other person's doing. Um, there are a few things that one can do. Uh, well, first of all, confront them. A uh, typical response would be that they may retaliate and the atta attack will always be, doesn't have to be immediately, but sometimes it does. But the attack is vengeful. Okay, so be very aware that the personal attack or the attack on an emotional level is on it will be at the cost of you in a revengeful or vengeful manner. Okay, um, it's almost always good to rather just cut your loss and step away from this particular person in your life or this entity in your life. Um, seek help. Uh, do contract revocations. Do mantras. Um, keep loving and working on what is within you. Know that you are a gifted, loving, heart person. Feel your love and your heart. Um, acknowledge who you are. And when you start to acknowledge who you are and you start to experience that energy moving around you, you will start to, to draw that particular energy towards you. But remember that there is something that is important for you to take note of. There, the one thing that gives any type of abuser away is if there is something that they seek from you and it is at the cost of you. Problem number one. Problem number two, to love yourself but at the cost of others at the cost of another that's vanity that's not self-love so there's the difference between the two so i hope that this gives you a little bit of a uh, awareness of of what we're looking at um very interesting subject matter i am as i said investigating it or researching it in a little bit more deeper um, level um and uh good luck and much love to you and have a beautiful day and stand up for yourself much love to you bye